Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Real Life Health Show. I'm so excited to be at the place where it all started for me. This is Hippocrates Health Institute, and I took that three life change program uh, years ago when I was diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease. I came here, I got better, and the rest is history here. I've been teaching the rough who died for a long time. So I'm happy to be here today with the medical director of Hippocrates Health Institute. This is Dr. Josh. How are you doing, Dr. Josh? I'm great. Thank you. It's, it's great to meet you in person. I've, I've seen your videos. It's, it's great to be here at Hippocrates with you. Thank you for being here. It's really full circle for me. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to hear a little about your journey because uh, you've been here for a while, then you left and you come back here. So That's what's right. been your experience with the raw food lifestyle and particularly with disease and how people handle it. Yeah, so it's, it's very exciting to me. I'm, I'm a physician who started off very traditionally. <laughs> and by, by traditionally, I mean uh, kind of like that with trauma, accidents, working 20 years in emergency rooms all around the country, licensed in 14 states, two degrees in biochemistry, two degrees from Harvard. So I started with a very strong clinical basic science background and it was great for dealing with acute trauma we could save people's lives the problem is with chronic diseases i found that what tra traditional medicine doesn't offer much for for chronic diseases and i know your story you know it, it wasn't until you, you tried try diet to reverse inflammatory disease what i love about working here at hippocrates is that every day every week i see stories where people with chronic diseases which did not get better with the medications and surgery from traditional medicine that that we're able just by changing what people eat so that's here and then and then when i went to true north fasting center the same thing if you get people off of the western diet and just getting them to drink water for three weeks or eight weeks these chronic diseases go away i mean it's, it's amazing it's amazing stuff wow. i want to talk about true north because you worked at this fasting place which sure. is uh, really great and healing is fasting but uh, you mentioned chronic disease chronic disease explain right. to the audience uh, for those that are new what to just mean acute and chronic disease sure so an acute disease would be you got in a car crash and you injured your neck and we need to make sure that you didn't break any bones and if you did we can fix the bones set set them and and let your body heal them uh, after the surgery so that's that's the acute the chronic is if you have inflammatory inflammatory bowel disease or if you have alzheimer's or if you have a heart attack um, cancer cancer uh, rheumatoid arthritis these are all chronic diseases where sure you, the, the doc, you can go see a doctor and they will prescribe maybe a medication to suppress your immune system for all, for um, rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis but the problem is those things don't get to the root cause and the root cause of many different diseases are chronic toxins and chronic infections now, did you go to school, like medical school? What, what's your background? Yeah, so my background is I went to uh, Harvard, MIT, HST, Health Sciences Technology program that was strong on the basic science. Uh, but, but I learned traditional medicine and, and I learned that the focus was on prescribing drugs. And, and guess what? Traditional drugs do have a place, but the problem is most of them don't get at the root cause. Sure. Now you're here at Hippocrates Health Institute, and uh, I've seen the transformations over the years, uh, including myself. And you worked at a fasting place as well. Do you find them working together, the raw foods and the fasting? Do you think one is, do you think it's a situational thing where you'd prefer one over the other, or do you think always it's like, hey, you need to do this, or you need to do that? How do you determine of those two from your experience? Yeah, so from my experience, fasting is great for fixing slow moving disease. So, for example, we were able to reverse slow growing cancer, non Hodgkin's lymphoma, and published. A study with a slow growing cancer, fasting was able to reverse the tumor. But if you have a fast growing cancer, unfortunately, fasting normally is not going to be strong enough by itself to do that reversal. So I think it really depends on the situation. But to my mind, both fasting, and when I say fasting, I meant 
water fasting, although uh, juice fasting can also be very effective. Uh, so be because I found both fasting helpful, but also eating raw foods here helpful, to my mind, what, what, we're, what we're not seeing is the most effective thing is just cutting out the processed food, the added salt, added oil, and added sugar to our diet. And, and you don't see those things, but if you stop putting those things in your mouth, you get a lot better. And I also, I talk about this like I talk about exercise. People say, Dr. Josh, how much should I exercise? Well, it's going to be an individual thing. Like if, if you have difficulty just walking for, for five steps, then, you know, maybe get to six steps. But if you're exercising 30 minutes a day, you know, maybe get to an hour a day. So the same thing with with your diet. Like if, if you're on a 70% raw diet, you know, let's, let's bump it up to 80 or 90%. Sure. Um, and, and needless to say, I've seen people heal chronic disease on a 70% raw diet. It just took them a lot longer than being 100% raw. But on my own journey, it took me years to go from eating the Western diet to eating a diet, a, a raw diet like, like at Hippocrates. And because it took me years to make that transition, I definitely have compassion because I know how hard it was for me. When, when I heard about this information, I was like, that's really good information, but what's the minimum I could do and see, and see great changes? And, and each step I made, you know, I cut out meat. Hey, I feel a lot better. Each step I made, I got better and better. But I realize now I was dealing with an addiction. I was addicted to the salt, oil, and sugar. I was addicted to the meat. I was addicted to, to the fat, Exactly. Now, did you ever have a medically diagnosed disease personally? Oh, uh, yeah, personally. So a dozen years ago, I was 50 pounds overweight and had high blood pressure. But it was worse than that. As a physician who went to Harvard Medical School, it's like, I should, I should know how to treat high blood pressure. Like, this is like the basic thing. I, I was taking four different blood pressure medications. I couldn't get my blood pressure down. I'm like, why is this so hard for me? But in school, they're not teaching you what Hippocrates teaches you. They're teaching you how to deal with drugs and control the disease, not to overcome it, correct? I, I would say that's true. Uh, I mean, we did study the Framingham Heart Study, and there was one of the arms with a vegetarian or vegan arm where, you know, they live longer and they had less high blood pressure and, and less diabetes. So that information was there. It was kind of buried. There, there were no core lectures on nutrition except for talking about the vitamins and talking about how to prescribe intravenous nutrition, TPN. So, so the things that you could write prescriptions for we talked about, but not, not using diet what we put in our mouth, nutrition, using that to reverse disease. Sure. And, and, and it's interesting being here at Hippocrates, the, the story of Hippocrates founded in the 1950s in Boston where, where I went to Harvard Medical School. Appar <laughs> apparently there were physicians at that time at Harvard Medical School who would secretly, you know, if, if they couldn't get someone better, they'd be like, you know, I've exhausted everything I can do with traditional medicine. So don't, don't tell anyone, but there's this place, you know, uh, and the the, place, and yeah. the animal, just, just go there and, and, and they'll, they'll help you. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so today's times, you know, I'm trying to push the Hippocrates diet to let people know it's not only if you're sick, even if you're not sick, I highly recommend it because it'll keep you from getting sick. But there are people that tell me, well, they tried a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet and it didn't work for them. And I, I tried to explain to them, like you were saying, oil, fat, and sugar, and vegetarian junk foods is completely different what they're doing here at Hippocrates Health Institute. So I try to warn people, don't be misunderstood. You know, not all vegetarian or even raw food diets are healthy. That's why I love the Hippocrates diet because they're doing it with literally whole foods, fruits and vegetables as the, as the main thing, and they're using the living foods. This is a big difference between raw food and live foods, and they focus on the live foods and the sprouts, and it's really amazing. So. Do you find a lot of people saying they didn't have success on a vegetarian diet or a raw food diet, and then as you investigated, they really weren't eating the healthy oh, way of doing it? Oh, 100%. I run into that all the time because I know that's how I started off on this a dozen years ago. I was eating vegan junk food, which is added salt, oil, and sugar, and yeah, I was feeling a little bit better, but it didn't fix my underlying cause. So basically, if you're trying to reverse disease, 
you need, unfortunately, to be extreme and cut everything out, in my opinion. Now, you, you, if you decide not to, it's gonna, just going to take you a whole lot longer. And I see that now where my focus is reversing Alzheimer's. If you're trying to reverse a chronic disease that's been there for 30 years with, with brain destruction, you normally have to take extreme measures, which is cutting out the added salt, oil, and sugar, and adding in the nutrients from, from raw, from, from whole plants. Well, my passion of doing this isn't just to be some vegan person that uh, wants to save the climate of the world. I think all of the things that are connected to veganism is wonderful, and they all are part of the reason I do. But my main passion and goal is I suffered from a disease, and I don't want to have to have people suffer from something that they don't have to because people say, well, I've tried everything, but nothing worked. Well, they didn't try Hippocrates, so I try to let people know, well, so did I until I came here and it worked. So I really focus on people that are already sick, and because they're already sick, sometimes People might find themselves, it's, it's, it's too late because they've already created so much damage. However, nobody knows when that point is. So you should always give it a try. So for me, it was ulcerative colitis, which is inflammatory bowel disease. Now, I know you have a passion about Alzheimer's and helping people with Alzheimer's. Definitely. Uh, so I want to talk to you specifically about that. But what created this passion of you to, to help people naturally help themselves who have Alzheimer's? Yeah, so for me, it was personal. My grandmother had Alzheimer's, and I saw how it devastated, not just her, but my family and, and my parents. Uh, they were like, wow, if this could happen to my grandma, this could happen to them in 20 years. So, so it, as a kid, I, I saw that. So from an early age, I was afraid of Alzheimer's. I was taught to be. And, but the exciting thing now is, we don't have to fear it anymore because they're actually simple things that we can do to reverse it. You know, Dean Ornish published a study just over a month ago showing that a vegan diet with smart supplementation, you can actually reverse Alzheimer's. This was a double blind uh, uh, st study to do it. So, so we've got that and uh, but to go back, you, to my mind, you know, and this is, this is kind of the biochemistry in me, uh, that your inflammatory bowel disease, we think of ulcerative colitis, oh, that's one disease, and Alzheimer's is another. But to my mind, they're, they're almost the same disease because if you look at ulcerative colitis, one of the things that happens is you lose your uh, gut barrier. You get leaky gut. Well, it turns out the same proteins, the same process that causes a leaky gut causes a leaky brain. And the leaky brain is part of the reasons, part of the underlying causes of Alzheimer's. So once you start delving deep to the root causes, the same things that can reverse ulcerative colitis can reverse Alzheimer's. Well, it's really... Uh, you could say there's one disease with many different stages, and it's the same answer. First of all, it's stop what's causing the problem. That's number one. Eliminate what's causing the problem. And then, especially in cases that have been affected for a long time, add certain things back to it, some, some certain uh, supplementation, and definitely you want to change your diet and get that right. And that's what Hippocrates does. They have people come in to do this three-week program. They have a medical evaluation when they first come here. Their blood works looked at and everything, their history is considered. They put them on this amazing program and they might gear it a little even towards their particular situation or reason why they're here. And then they monitor it while they're here. Then they even monitor it when they go home from here. It's absolutely a bulletproof program that's been proven to work for over 50 years. Yeah, and, and what's really cool is that when you go over after the three weeks, you go over with the guest here and you compare the lab work before and after, invariably things get so much better. People's cholesterol drops drops, you know, it's like the outside physicians don't understand that, that many of these high cholesterol, there, there's no cholesterol in plants. So if you stop eating non-plants, your cholesterol is normally going to fall because, you know, sure, we, we all make enough cholesterol. We don't need extra from animal products. Sure. Getting back to the old time is sure. you know, one of the things that people say that we could be deficient on if we go on a vegan diet is our EFAs, central fatty acids, right. and so on. And I don't necessarily think that's the case because you can eat uh, some flax seeds and, and some hemp seeds and possibly get it. However, 
some people will make a connection to deficiency in EFAs right. and possible Alzheimer's later. I see a lot of vegan doctors uh, promoting uh, algae supplements and so on. But do you think uh, if somebody's eating a good enough diet that they don't even need the supplements when it comes to the EFAs? Yes. What's your opinion? My, my, my opinion, I'm, I'm actually a fan of the algae oils, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. I've, I've actually measured the level of the omega-3 um, oils in, in patients, including in vegans, and very often the levels are low. And, and I mean specifically EPA, DHA, and DPA. If there's an omega check or you can actually do a blood test to check, and I'm not saying universally they're deficient, but some people are. And if you're, I would say either check or I'm a big fan of supplementing with algae oil for that reason. I mean, of course, we, we provide here algae and, you know, E3 Live and, and, and supplements like that. And you're, you're right, flax seeds, ground flax seeds are an amazing thing for everyone, even ignoring the, the omega-3s part. The, the, the lignin in it is anti-cancer. I mean, but the problem is everyone's got slightly different biochemistry in terms of being able to convert the ground flax seeds into the omega-3s, the EPA the DHA and the DPA. And for that reason, I am a big fan of supplementation with the algae oil, in, including three grams a day. Uh, j just from the data that I've seen that it, it, it promotes brain health and it helps to prevent and reverse Alzheimer's. So do you see a connection between uh, Alzheimer's and deficiency in EFAs? I, I do. That, that's one of the connections that comes out. It's, it's worse in, in people who have what's called the apolipoprotein E4 allele, the, the genetics. So, so if you inherited from your parents one or two copies of this E4, you're even more likely to be deficient in the omega-3s. You're going to need more of the omega-3s. Yes. Is there a good accurate test to check your omega-3s? Because I know there's several out there. There's right. one you prick your finger and you put the thing in. There's several tests out there, but I hear positive and negatives about all of them. Is there a good aqua test that you suggest? I mean, I, I like the omega check from Cleveland Labs, but there but there's several good ones out there. And they're pretty accurate, you believe? They're, they're accurate. The, the problems are expensive. Sure, yeah, but, sure. But, I, but I guess supplementing with algae oil is also expensive. Okay, now what about people that... Uh, they're doing, they want the best health possible, but they don't really care much about the ethics of eating animals. Right. Like if somebody's eating a pure vegetarian diet, even a Hippocrates diet, but wanted to add a little fish oil just to get those EFAs. Right. We know their concerns. Uh, if you don't get a good source of fish oil, it could be, there could be issues with that. But yeah. if somebody's not concerned with the animal ethics and they seek out right. a fish oil, do you see that's possibly better than doing nothing? What's your opinion? Yes. Yeah, so I have a mixed opinion on that because Great, you, you get the fish oil, you get the omega-3s. The problem is with it, you may well get um, some of the heavy metals like the mercury and the cadmium, and you get PCBs and other fatty toxins, forever chemicals, plastics that, you know, fish may have, you know, 100 or 200 years ago, you may have been able to get wild-caught fish that wasn't toxic. But from a, a toxicity standpoint, I would say stay away from fish and animal products because they're at top on top of the food chain, and we know that these toxins accumulate if you're eating from the top of the food chain. And we also know that toxins will decrease your life expectancy, will 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 um, t turn up your biologic age. So for me, sure, I, I, animal ethics I think is very important, but even if you're doing it from a selfish standpoint, hey, I wanna live as long as possible, I don't want to eat at the top of the food chain where I'm getting all these toxins. To me, it's like eating dirt. You know, normally we wouldn't eat dirt um, because of all the stuff, you know. So to be eating animal products is like eating all the toxins. And, sure. Yeah. And, but, but these are toxins that people can't see. You can't see when you eat fish that there's mercury in it. You just feel the effects years, months or years later. Now, with all these algae supplements that are out there that uh, seems like educated professionals are promoting – do you have your research of different products and do you find one better than the other or would you suggest people just get 
what you can find if it's coming from a reputable source? Um, I would say rep, find, find a reputable source. It's, it's challenging. One of the, the, the tricky things is if you want to be taking three grams a day, you want to be taking three grams a day of the omega-3. Some of the supplements, they'll mix omega-9s or omega-6s, and they're not my first choice, but you have to basically do a, do a mathematical calculation, like, okay, so if only a half of this is omega-3, well, and to get to three grams a day, I might have to take, you know, six grams of this a day. Sure. And what do they use here at Hippocrates? I know they have their own brand of... Yeah, I, I don't know the specific name, but the, the brand here is is 2 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3. Okay. So, so is it important when they're taking the, the, the product that it has the mixture of both, or should they just take straight up omega-3? Omega I, I would focus on omega-3, and I'll, I'll tell you why. If you look at the average American diet, it's very heavily weighted, a lot more omega-6 to omega-3. Most people are already getting enough of the omega-6. It's the omega-3 that people should be focusing on. There's a lot more left to this great interview with Dr. Josh at Hippocrates Health Institute, but I wanted to take a moment right now and tell you, if you are suffering from any type of disease or you want to prevent suffering from disease, Hippocrates Health Institute, where Dr. Josh is the medical director at, has changed my life on a personal level and I wanted to help you as well. If you are ready to do their program and take charge of your life, I am here to help you. Below this video, I'm going to put a phone number and an email, and you contact me, and I will personally explain the program to you and get you signed up if that's your desire to do so. So contact me at the information below, and now let's get back to the interview with Dr. Josh at Hippocrates Health Institute. What about somebody like me? 30 years, raw vegan. You know, there was a year or two in between. Okay. I experimented, but, uh. but long-term <laughs> raw vegan. Uh, I take some of the basic supplements, B12, maybe vitamin D sometimes, but blood work's been pretty good. Okay. Did get tested for my EFAs, a little low, uh, but I feel amazing. Is this something that, hey, just play it safe and take the supplement, or if you're doing okay, don't, no reason to worry? I, I would still be worried, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you so, so two things. Number one, even though you feel amazing, wouldn't it be great to feel even more amazing? So that's number one. But number two is from the studies, and, and this is close to my heart, having taken care of head trauma patients for, for decades, is it turns out you have a much better result after head trauma if you've got a higher level of omega-3s. And the problem is, you know, if, if, uh, if you hit your head in a car crash or something like that, there's going to be a time delay before we can get you omega-3s into your body, into your brain. And, and that time delay is is going to be, you're basically going to have a, a poor resort, resort. So the re, one of the reasons that you want to get your omega-3s up is prevention if you ever fall and hit your head. Sure. I don't walk around with a helmet, but I actually drive with a helmet. I do. Really? I, <laughs> yeah. didn't, I didn't see it. But yeah, uh, okay. yeah. And uh, it's pretty <laughs> um, amazing to see what you're saying here. So, uh, so definitely uh, check it out uh, because I heard other people say this. So, this is, so it's not just people pushing something. So you're from somebody who has the medical background, it's right. important. Now, right. three grams for everyone or yeah, you would suggest? I, I would say yeah. Okay. So, how much is that? Uh, like, is it? Did it come in capsules? How do? Let, what are the let, forms? Let, like for, for, for a typical algae uh, pill, we're talking about six or seven, depending on the size. But but again, you, you have to actually do the calculation because if it's um, if it's let's say it's three to one omega six to omega three, then you might need seven or eight or nine pills, and you might say like, I don't want to take all these pills. Why don't I just get something that's pure omega three? Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, what if I'm eating, what if I just say I'm going to eat more flax or something? Right, or and, and I think that's great. The problem and the issue is I don't know the specific uh, metabolic pathways for you. So, you might be converting that to the EPA and the DHA and the DPA, or you might not be. And, you know, we can do the expensive tests and, 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 and check and see, but if you're not, then... 
uh, then you do need to supplement. But if the test does come out like you're okay, then you whatever you're doing is working. Yeah. So okay. so so if your numbers look good, it's like keep doing what you're doing. Do you know the test I'm talking about where you prick your finger and you mail it in? Yeah, there, but there, there's several different companies. So, yeah, yeah, but are those pretty accurate? Or? They, they can be, yes. Okay, yeah. okay, very good, very yeah. good. Well, uh, whatever <laughs> it is, if somebody's suffering out there or not even suffering, Hippocrates, their program works great. Now, I eat... Uh, Hippocrates diet, with one exception, I add fruit to my diet. Okay. And Hippocrates Health Institute, especially if somebody has cancer, uh, recommends no uh, sugar, even from fruit. Uh, but there's mixed opinions about this. Uh, they are dealing with a lot of people who have sugar-related illnesses here, so this is one of the reasons why they keep it. So what's your opinion about uh, fruit in general? Yeah, so in general, I'm actually a big fan of whole fruit. And I... In January this year, I went to the Woodstock one week festival. I, what, a, what a fun time just spending a whole week just eating whole tropical fruit. And I got to tell you, some of the healthiest people I've ever seen were there. So, so this business of you can't be healthy eating whole fruit, that's, that's not true for number one. Number two is we actually do serve fruit here three, three times a week. Now, now we, we may tell some people I, we don't want you eating the fruit, but but to my mind, whole fruit is is good, and I think sugar or carbohydrates have gotten a bad name. You know, one of our signature drinks here at Hippocrates is our green juice, which is made from sprouts and, and other things. But if you analyze it, it's actually ninety percent carbohydrate. So it's not that we're against carbohydrates we're against added sugars and you know brian here will say oh the the fruits today are are specifically designed to have a lot more sugar than they were 100 years ago if you look at apples etc i think that's true but the flip side is i, I think our ancestors were were designed to to live off of fruit so again you, you have to balance what you're dealing with but but i will say that i've seen type 2 diabetics reverse their diabetes using fruit because fruit will actually increase insulin sensitivity. Yeah, I have a lot of videos about diabetes and it's so important to understand. So we shouldn't fear fruit. But if you are working with a professional who has a successfully proven program, uh, do what they suggest. And if you are going to come to Hippocrates, they definitely recommend uh, cutting it back tremendously and in certain situations cutting it out. Uh, but like myself, after you come here, you make the appropriate adjustments uh, for future and see what works and what doesn't and monitor it through tests. And I think it's a great thing. And uh, so like I said, I eat a lot of sprouts, I eat uh, fruit, and I pretty much stick to the Hippocrates diet. But what they've done here is so great because they don't take people like me here. What they do is they take the average person who's already sick and also has no idea about nutrition or food. And they bring them here and they make a palatable, delicious meals for people to make that adjustment from a sickly, sad diet to a, a healthy diet. And uh, people aren't going to or willing to or able to uh, just make that change to some healthy raw food at home. That's the difference. You can go and get the fake hamburgers and the fake meats and everything else and palatably enjoy it. But that's not healthy. It's like one bad thing to another. But here they teach you and show you how to eat healthy uh, vegetarian food. And I will say that there are, there are a few people who come here not for the health benefits. It's a resort. People just like to hang out at the pool. Oh, it's a world-class <laughs> health, health resort. I mean, when I say people not like me, I've been raw 30 years, so I already know this. But if you're just looking to prevent disease and you're already healthy, this is a world-class health resort. If you look at those famous spa magazines, this is on their list. And I know people that come here for anniversaries, people that have gotten better years ago and they still come here. It's an amazing, beautiful place. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. And uh, it's so great that we have this information, this knowledge. And now you know, because some people ask, do they have a medically trained people and a medical staff and, and so on? Uh, this isn't just a bunch of people that got together and are just doing this. They do have professionally trained uh, people here that know what's going on and they know what they're doing. So whether you just want to have a great vacation, or if you know somebody who's suffering or you're suffering with a possible illness or diagnosed disease, 
Don't wait. Come on out there and check it out. I'm going to put the, the link below so you come check this program out. It's definitely worth it. It, it is worth it. And just to say, one, one idea I had is that if you're coming here or on on medications, one of the big dangers is if you continue on your medications while doing this and, and for example, you're on blood pressure medications, your blood pressure will, will normally drop just by eating this way. If you're taking your medications in addition, you can run into trouble. So that's why I like that there are medically trained people here to help you navigate between the, the pharmacology side and the, the plant side. Absolutely. This is a great place. I'm so glad we got to finally chat. Oh, yeah. And we're going to do some more. I want to have them on the show some more. So put those questions below and we'll have them back. And uh, Dr. Josh, anything else you want to say for the people out there? Yeah. So, so one, one last message to, to emphasize is Alzheimer's disease is, is preventable and reversible. That's why I came back to Hippocrates here to start a program here in the next few months that, that'll last one week to help people reverse Alzheimer's. And then I'm also at clinics here in South Florida offering an FDA approved drug for compassionate use intravenously that decreases inflammation. I'm integrative. I believe in taking the best of traditional medicine and the raw and raw plants to help with reversing diseases like Alzheimer's. And you know, Paul, it's been a real pleasure to meet you in person and thank you so much for interviewing me. Thank you again. So Alzheimer's, you say it uh, can be reversible as well. It is, Alzheimer's is reversible. We have that documented from this published study by Dean Ornish very recently, but in my own clinical experience, working with hundreds of patients, I, I see it all the time. So, uh, it Technically, is all time is in dementia the same thing or are they different? Yeah, so it's very close. So in this country, in the United States, 90% of people with dementia have Alzheimer's. There is a 10%, but when I'm talking to the general public, I use the two interchangeably. But, you know, if, if you have a, a brain tumor, that can cause dementia, but that's not Alzheimer's. Okay, so with, when we started off, we were talking about fasting versus the Hippocrates diet and changing. Yeah. So... Would you consider somebody with Alzheimer's, would they benefit more from like a long-term water fast or from the diet change or both? I would say both. Yeah, but, but normally fasting, I would recommend doing under medical supervision if you're doing water fasting. But if they had Alzheimer's, would you, would you send them like to, to True North? I, I potentially would, but that would be one of many different approaches that they would take. Wonderful. So, and, and and by the time you hit a chronic disease like like Alzheimer's, normally just fasting or just exercise, even though they're helpful, they're not going to completely reverse it. You need to put everything together. Wonderful. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, the the drug to reduce inflammation because True. one of the things of Alzheimer's is inflammation, right, on in the brain, right? Right. right. Uh, have you heard of the astaxanthin? Astaxanthin. Oh, yes. That, that's a, an antioxidant. The, the highest, and I have one by a company called Velasta. Okay. It's without a doubt the highest anti-inflammatory product you can okay. get. And uh, it's helped people with Alzheimer's and every other inflammatory bowel disease, uh, inflammatory disease out there tremendously. So I have to awesome. show you some more testimonials yeah. of I, that. I would love to see that. And But even that amazing antioxidant, Normally, you would, you would layer it in with lots of different things. Sure, sure. Well, yeah, yeah. this man has the experience, and he knows, uh, so we definitely want to check it out. Now, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, would it be through Hippocrates, or do you have a personal way they can get in touch with you? Yeah, so, so, so they could reach me through Hippocrates. They can also reach me through my website, which is just easy. It's drjosh, D-R-J-O-S-H dot com. And my email address is drjosh, D-R-J-O-S-H, at drjosh.com. And then on social media, I'm on all the social media. My uh, name there is Green Brains MD. Okay. Green Brains with an S M D. I'm going to put all those links below. <laughs> Definitely uh, check it out. And uh, I know somebody out there is going to be able to use this help. So uh, check out the links, click on them, and look at them and keep them because if not now, eventually uh, you might need to get in touch with him. So thank you again for being on the show. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Put your comments, questions below, and we'll have Dr. Josh on again in the future. Until then, everybody, have a great day and a great raw life. Peace and plants. Thank you for watching this important interview 
for health. And if you are suffering from any disease or you want to avoid getting disease or you know someone who is suffering, Hippocrates Health Institute has changed my life. It's where I got started. It's where I learned all about health. I do recommend their three-week life change program, but even if you can get there for a week, it can change your life. If you are interested with more information about Hippocrates Health Institute, you want to find out more, or you perhaps want to go there and you're ready to start your journey, please contact me at the email below and the phone number below, and I will personally explain the situation to you there and talk to you about their program and get you signed up. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life, brighten up your life.